Peace and joy, guys. Welcome back to another video, Drumhiller Farms. Hey, today we are going to be planting some multi species cover crops into a perennial pasture. Now, the grass is just starting to take off. Our cattle are on their last paddock for the year, and we are going to start getting some seed in the ground. But first, we got to take off our bale unroller. Now, listen. I'm so disgusted with this tractor, to be honest with you, I hate to even show it on camera. It is a muddy mess. Unfortunately, with the condition of my knee, I've been forced to use this tractor every day for chores. And our laneways, both to get the bales and to get out to where the cows are, are horrible. We've had tons of rain this spring. We gotta get the bale on roller off of this rig, and we gotta hook up to that little planter over there. Come along with me today. I appreciate you watching the video. Let's go. All right, guys. Well, I just couldn't take it anymore. I had to put a wash job down on this thing. Well, it's not perfect, but we're not out of mud month yet, so cleans up not too bad. Which it better with only a few hundred hours on it. Looks like I'll be feeding with the Greg Judy bale on roller tonight, because if I don't, that thing's going to be a mess again. I'm going to hook up to this cedar planter, whatever you want to call it. And I'm gonna take it up to the other shop and get it vacuumed out. All right, well, those of you who's been around the channel for a while, you'll know that we did do some interseeding with multi-species annuals into our perennial pastures with mild success. I'm not gonna say that uh, it worked out exactly the way that we wanted or the way that we planned to. I'm not ready to give up on it yet. I'm ready to continue to try to figure out how to do it. There's several people out there that are doing this and being very successful at maximizing the amount of acres that they have. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, I am definitely going to try to maximize the amount of acreage we have to possibly get a little more grazing out of the same piece of land by interseeding these multi-species annuals right into our perennial pasture grounds. All right, here we are, guys. This is our multi-species annual mix here. Uh, we went through Byron Seed Company again on this. And if you guys remember last year, I had two pallets because I did a spring, a summer, and a fall this year i'm doing the spring and the summer now last year they palletized this thing beautifully for me um, they had the fall on the bottom the summer then the spring and i thought boy whoever packaged that pallet there's a guy that was doing his job right or gal whoever it was this year um i can't say the same thing unfortunately because it appears as though they put the summer mix on top and the spring mix on the bottom, which really is unfortunate for us. So I'm gonna have to unpackage all these. I'm gonna get them on the planter. First, I'm gonna vacuum that planter out, make sure that there's no crud in there. And um, probably gonna vacuum the cab out while I'm there too, since you know I, I washed the thing for the year. Might as well vacuum it out. And then I'm gonna get planting because before you know it, I'm going to have to do chores. All right, so they did put the one I needed first on the bottom. This is what's in this mix. You guys can pause the video or whatever and see what's in there. I'm going to get this loaded up. Whatever I have left, I'm going to put on top of it for weight. to work out of a dirty cab. Uh, 
really wasn't a whole lot in there, but I kind of wanted to just be safe. Okay, so I had to adjust the depth on this drill. This seed mixture, they say to plant between a half and three quarters of an inch. So I set it at five eighths, which is right between those two numbers. And I'm gonna see how it works. Now last year, I, I got first disclosure, this drill, I don't know if it's the right one for what I'm trying to do. Um, I've been looking at some other drills. Originally, I was gonna buy another totally different style drill, spend way more money, and I thought, before I get that crazy, I wanna see if this even works. I am convinced that it can work. I haven't figured it out fully. Um, again, I wish this seed was already in the ground, but it was so wet, it didn't dry up till about two days ago. And two days ago, I already had people coming over to do the pastured pig fencing, so I really couldn't take time away from doing that. But at any rate, I'm gonna test this. I'm gonna bring the wrenches with me, and if I have to, I'm gonna adjust this back to like an inch because I think last year I had a problem with not getting these cutter wheels to cut the soil enough to drop a seed. So you can see inside there, what happens is this cuts a slice, these two discs cut a slice in the soil and it drops a seed. And then these are supposed to pack the soil back in, which doesn't work the best with an with a, a sod base. Now, what I'm looking at and I'm thinking about getting is a drill that on the front has some discs as well that are waved to kind of break up a small, just a small bit of soil first, split it open with the disc, drops it in, and then since the soil has been kind of broken apart, those filler wheels will fill the soil back in the hole. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I got to tighten up this chain. It's a little tight for the both of us in here. Right, so the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to make sure that all these tubes are free and clear of any debris. Now I did go through and move them around and crimp them and make sure that, uh, you know, there was nothing stiff in there, mud daubers or somebody built a nest or something like that in there. But the true way to check it is to with this raised in the air this is a ground driven machine so i will spin this tire and make sure that there's an even distribution of seed down on the cement so i can do that just like this and you can hear it dropping through the tubes and you can see how much seed fell and it looks like every single one of them dropped so that's what we're looking for. Let's go planting. Before we head out to the field to start planting, is we have to change our seeding rate. Now this is the number of seeds that fall through each of these tubes and in between the disc. So I already know what the seeding rate is because I did this last year uh, with the same mix of seed. And what you have to do is there's a calculation between the size of your seed or what type of seed that you are putting in the drill versus your seeding rate. So we want 120 pounds per acre. And if you look at our mix, because um, all the seeds are different sizes, you take the one that you've got the most of, which is the peas. And that's what your seeding rate, that's how you figure your seeding rate out. Neighbors out doing spring tillage. So I was a little bit worried that these cattle were gonna come bum rush me, thinking I was out here to feed them, but I would say those are some pretty content cattle. They're not even getting up, man. They're just out there saying until I see a bale starting to be unrolled I ain't getting up I'm gonna sit here and chew my cut all right I'm gonna make a pass there and back and then I'm just gonna see 
check the depth and everything and see how it all is looking. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. I do think I might want to go a little deeper because it's so bumpy. You know where it's nice and flat, it's got probably the right amount. But when you go over a bump or anything like that and you see what I mean by not being able to close it back up it becomes a problem then now here we barely sliced the soil because there was a bump and then here we went in you know an inch and a quarter or whatever I think you can just come pick me up on the gator so I can don't have to drive this all the way back there. These they're not gonna leave me alone. And I'll just take you back home or whatever. Alright, thanks. I kind of thought this was gonna happen. The cattle don't know what's going on. They're used to seeing the tractor to feed them and you know, I just need to, oh, come on, let's go. I just need to drop them a couple bales here and go on my day without them in the way every time I make a pass. Well, guys, cows are curious, that's for sure. And they'll lick and eat and munch on whatever you got laying out here but i want to take this time while allison brings the gator down and this is a prime example i know some of you might be thinking why are you seeding in the pasture that the cattle are in and right there's the reason why you can see my plant marks and look this guy's hoof is on two of them right dead center of them and i want to look at that a little bit closer look what he did he closed that seed right inside of that so there's a couple different reasons actually why the cattle are in this field but the biggest reason is last year when i planted this multi-species mix i had great competition with the perennial pasture and in the mix that i was interceding so much so that the perennial pasture outgrew the mix and really you know dwarfed it out and wasn't able to really grow like it should have and right now things are just starting to grow i don't know how well you can see it in the camera but if I pan across this pasture that they're in and we go over to these pastures that they're not in, you can kind of see this is greener and taller. It's not much, but it's just enough that they're keeping this down, which is going to stunt the growth on this field. There's no doubt about that. And I'm going to make a video here in a couple days um on that very thing so stay tuned for that but you see how you can see the rolls of hay that um we've rolled the hay out in so distinctively and over here you can't really see anything a week ago this looked just like this over here you can see where we rolled out the hay all over the pasture but there's been enough growth that has covered that hay to where you can't really see it. Now, it doesn't look like much, 
probably in the camera, but I'm going to tell you there's a big difference between those pastures and this pasture that they're in. And here's the reason why. Look, they're going through and they're just every day picking a little bit of that little growth that's coming every day. And although I don't want them to do that, I kind of want them to do that. And the reason why is I'm going to plant this and I'm going to leave them in here in the same pasture that I'm planting for probably about three days. After three days, I'm going to block them out of this where I'm planting and I'm going to block them out of the far side that they can't keep munching that grass down. And we're going to give them a strip in the middle of this, probably about a 10 acre strip. And we're going to feed hay on that 10 acres for probably the next three weeks. Within three weeks, we're going to be going out to pasture providing the weather stays the way it is because it looks like by the end of this next week we're going to be up into 75 degree temperatures which means the grass is really going to be growing and the cool season grasses love that 70 degree temperature during the day and 50 degree temperatures at night so um we're going to see some big growth here in the next few weeks so until then i'm going to let them keep munching this down to tend to the regrowth once these start to sprout and germinate i'm going to pull them off of here and hopefully this annual mix will also be growing at the same time as the perennial i don't want to stop that perennial growth that's our bread and butter um but they won't be so competing with one another they'll both have an even amount of growth and you can see you can hardly see my plant lines anymore just from them over here walking in this little area thanks 32 Allison's come to save the day. He even brought me some diesel. Cows are leaving us alone now, and we're planting. Hopefully, this works. Keeping an eye on my fill line on the seed box to know roughly how much seed I got in there. It's just a good way to actually to also calculate about how much seed you're actually laying down in there there was 21 bags total i've got seven bags in there so i've got about one third in that bat uh in that mixer right now so i should be able to do roughly uh three acres three and a half acres to be exact that's the beautiful thing about the way that the 
uh, cover cropping works is it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it, it, to be completely honest with you, it doesn't have to be perfect one bit because whatever you lay down is just going to be feed for the for the animals and also for the soil. So it, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just laying it down, hoping to get good soil contact and hopefully get something growing. My cedar is about empty. So this is the first fill. I had one bag fall off, <laughs> which bent that a little bit. But I'm also getting a little cows getting a little bit more curious about what's going on over here and they're wanting to come over. I knew when I did this that when it come time to refill this, I was gonna have to take all these off. But I do think it was worth it having that extra weight, that down pressure, and I kind of know where I seated these, so I'm going to see if it makes a difference having that down pressure on there. And I... More cows are coming over, they're curious, they want to know what's going on. time I planted these cover crop mixes I had all different kinds of opinions on the page that ranged from is it worth planting multi-species cover crops into your perennial pastures to how is this regenerative well I'd like to address both of those questions first it's regenerative because this mix is improving the soil. It's offering diversity to our grounds, as well as breaking up soil compaction by the roots in the plant and offering more feed for our cattle. Secondly, is it worth it? Well, there's a lot of guys that are out there doing what I'm doing and they're running, you know, 100 plus head of cattle on five acres for 30 days 20 to 30 days if i can accomplish that and that's my main goal huh, you're talking a game changer to my grazing operation if in the middle of august or june or you know whenever the next drought hits i can come in here with about 100 head of cattle and graze for 20 to 30 days that is huge. And that's what I'm trying to accomplish by interceding this multi-species annual mix. All right guys, it's takeout tonight. And I'll be finishing my afternoon on the tractor with takeout. There's a place you may Thanks for watching the video guys. Hit that subscribe button. Out late planting fields, you can see. A little dark still, but just finishing up here. We got about 10 acres planted today. Share the video with somebody that you might think will get some good information out of it. Peace and joy. God bless. Thanks for watching.